Here I've got this Yanmar 1GM and I am hoping to get a compression test done on it. I bought some pieces here, they've got to modify, I'll show you that. And then we'll get the injector off of it and see if we can get a compression test done. Alright, so this is what I have for the compression test. Uh, I've got the use of a, um, a friend's tool here, a compression tester for diesel. What I found online uh, from a TAC tractor supply store um, was this aluminum adapter and this is a this is an approximately one inch uh, diameter at the bottom that will slide in where the um, where the injector is on the engine and on the top there it's threaded you can see it's there's a hole through it um, it's threaded and that would receive something like this uh, this comes however with a, a 1 8 um, NPT thread um, which is, I don't even know why they do that, but it doesn't matter. It's too big um, to use the, uh, this adapter, that, uh, the M10 um, that I had available to me. So I went ahead and I bought an M12 adapter, which will fit the compression, uh, the compression tester here. This will slide in right over here. And uh, to make it fit, I also bought a drill and a tap set for an M12 fitting. Okay, I've got this marked to the depth I want right here. Let's go ahead and give it a little bit of spray for some lubrication. Okay, I got the, uh, the tap here. That's uh, M12 M12 by 125. And I've never used this before, but I had it in a kit, and the idea is that it'll just fit in one of those, and hopefully that's okay. Let me throw some oil on that. So you see how big that opening is. Um, the pressure from the cylinder um, is going to enter here and of course the gauge up at the top here. And I am actually concerned that this is so big um, that it's going to actually affect the reading. It's going to lower the compression reading because there's that, that much more volume available uh, for the air to expand. All right, what do we got here? Um, I'm going to go ahead and take off the uh, the inlet for the uh, for the diesel. I'm going to go ahead and loosen up these nuts that hold down this bracket right here for the injector. Okay, so I've got this uh, this nut off here uh, for the high pressure line. But this is not going to come out if I don't take out this end at the high pressure fuel pump. Okay, we're going to bump it over and we're hoping that this, this piece comes off. I've got everything uh, out of the way. This is loose right here. And I'm hoping if I bump it over with the, uh, uh, with the starter that it will pop this out and I won't have to pry it out like normal. So let's try this here. There you go. See that just pumped. That just came right out there. Nice. And here is the injector. So that is a Yanmar injector right here, spilling a bunch of diesel on my hand. Hmm. Seems a little big. But we'll see what we can do. Now when you thread these nuts on, they should be, let's see if I can get this centered, but you should go back and forth 
so that goes on as even as possible. And I'm going to just put them on good and snug. Hopefully that will be okay. Oh, you know what? I should probably crank this down too. What size is that? Okay. That's good and snug. It's not... It's in aluminum, so I don't want to crank on it too much. And that's going to pop right on there. And that's just over 300, it says. I think I may have touched this button at the bottom. Though, so let's try that again. Yeah, just about 300, which is not, or it's right at 300. Oh, but it's leaking off too. So part of the concern with the test, of course, is that this is not a good seal. This may not be a good seal. Maybe I should use some thread locker up there. Um, of course, the, the additional volume in the barrel here, again, I don't know what the calculation is. I guess I should do some research to find out. Um, the service manual for this engine does not specify um, the, um, the value for compression. It, uh, it wants you to check clearances. And that's all well and good if you have a bunch of tools, time, and knowledge. Um, I guess I have time, I suppose, but not uh, necessarily the tools or the knowledge. So let me go ahead and dig a little bit deeper on this, and we'll come back. Let's do this again, and we're going to also look to see if we can see where it's leaking here. Oh yeah, I feel it. I feel it coming out of the sides of here. So, and look how fast this is drawing down. Let's see if I can find out where that's coming from here. Um, I don't know, but I'm gonna try to put some, uh, some sort of thread tape on it to see if that will take care of it and change this reading. And we twist it in this way. I want around this way. Okay, the tape is on there. Let's go ahead and try this again. Hopefully you can see that. No, oh, it's worse than it was. No, that is definitely worse. Okay, well something is going on. I'm gonna to have to take some time to figure it out because I sure I don't know right now, but that wasn't even registering 200 PSI when I just did it. So all I did was put that thread tape on there. So let me just let this sit and we'll all think about it. <clears throat> Trying to find out why this thing is leaking so much. I pulled this back out um, and unthreaded this adapter. And what I what's going on here is at the end there is a Schrader valve right here. And when I was looking at that Schrader valve, and I don't know if this has anything to do with the reason why it's leaking so much right now, um, but that Schrader valve, there should be a spring in here. And I don't know if you could see that or not, but there is, there is no spring. Um, whatever spring there was in there is gone. Um, so I think that, that perhaps that is the, uh, the issue we're dealing with right now. Um, I, I got a replacement Schrader valve. There is a spring action there. It's actually kind of stiff. Um, but I'll go ahead and put this back in and then we'll try it again. I didn't put any, any pipe uh, thread tape on that this time. So we'll give this a go here, see what happens. Just uh, close to 300, maybe about 290 is what it shows there. I'm going to try, put some uh, pipe thread there. Okay, I got that wrapped. And it is sliding down, but slowly. Um, because I was concerned the adapter would decrease the reading 
I decided to do a little bit of investigating, and I found Boyle's Law. And Boyle's Law simply says that the, the initial pressure times the initial volume is going to equal the ending pressure times the ending volume. And so we have the bottom dead center essentially um, values here and top dead center under compression here. The local atmospheric pressure um, where I am taking these tests uh, is 12.82 PSI. I found that on the web. The bore and stroke for this uh, engine is 72 millimeters by 72 millimeters. And then using this uh, formula down here, I found that the ending volume uh, based on that 300 PSI measurement was going to be around 12,527 cubic millimeters. Um, now, I then measured the, the volume of the, uh, the adapter and I found that that added volume there was 3,084 millimeters cubed. And what I did is I subtracted, uh, subtracted this number from this um, ending volume and recalculate it for recalculated for the uh, uh, for the um, uh, pressure and found that it was real close to 400 psi.